So let's walk through another example of uh, copy and references. But in this case, what we're actually going to do is we're going to use a diagram to kind of explain the relationship between the reference variable and the object. And we'll use code side by side to kind of illustrate what's going on. Right, so here I have this very simple person class and you know, again, I'm not following best practices here with regards to encapsulation because the variable is public, but this is just to allow us to manipulate the instances of person more easily in this example. So at this point, um, I've declared my class. Um, I've set up a reference variable named me. And we're gonna try to be more precise with our terminology now. So this is a reference variable. It can store a reference to a person object or anything that can behave like a person, anything that has an is a relationship to a person. We'll come back and talk about more about polymorphism and references in the next lesson. But for now, this can store a reference to a person. Now, it doesn't store a reference to a person yet. It hasn't been initialized. So at this point, the reference variable is empty. Um, we can also set it to be null. That's sort of the same state. It doesn't actually hold anything. Um, when, let's see, go back and get the slides going. Um, when I initialize it, so now I actually have a person. And this is one of these things that really helps to keep things straight in your mind. There are never objects created in Java without the new keyword. Strings are kind of a weird exception, but other than strings, there are never objects created in Java without the new keyword. If you don't see new, there's no new object. When you do see new, there is a new object. And so now you can see on the diagram on the right, this relationship that we've established. So I have this person object and I have a reference to it that's saved in this variable me. So me doesn't actually store the object itself. Me stores a reference to the object, which we're illustrating here through this arrow. As I go on and continue this example, I can see now, hopefully this makes things a little bit more clear. So now I have two reference variables, me and you. Each one of them could refer to any person object. But when I copy, when I assign me to you on line five of this little example, what I'm doing is I'm actually not making a copy of the object. Do you see new? No. So there's no new objects that are being created. There's still only the one object I created on line four. Instead, what's happening here is I'm copying the reference. So I take the reference. It's like, again, making a copy of a phone number, an address, right? So, you know, two of you met and it's like, oh, you know, Jeff gave me his address. Here's a copy. So you take your copy and you write it down. You give it to the other person. Two copies of my address. I still only got one house. So here, what we've done is we've taken a copy of the reference from me and we've copied it into you. So now both me and you have a reference to the same person object that we created on line four. One person object, two reference variables, that refer to the same object. Because these two reference variables refer to the same object, any changes that they make to that object, like for example, making me a year younger, are visible to both uh, reference holders, right? So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm using the reference variable me to change the age of the object it refers to. So this has an impact on that person object that we created on line four that impact is visible to both references because they store the same object, because they store a reference to the same object. So because both me and you refer to the same person, if I change the age using me and then ret retrieve the age using you, I see the changes that I made through me. So again, you can think of this through, you know, real world examples, right? You know, one of you comes over, paints my house a different color, the other person sees the change if you both have a reference to my house. Uh, in this case, both me and you have a reference to the person object. I use me to make a change to the age, but that change is also visible to you because you refers to, in this case, the same object. So, you know, hopefully this is a, an example. I'll just go through it one more time uh, quickly. So here's my, um, here's my me reference variable so far uninitialized. Now I create on the right side of this assignment a new person. Initially, the age of the person is zero because that's the default value for an uninitialized int as an instance variable. So on the right side here, I have a new person object and I know that because I see the new keyword. So I'm assigning that into this reference variable. So now me stores a reference to this new person object that I created. 
when line five runs, and this is probably the most important line to sort of solidify in your understanding of this concept, right? I'm copying the reference. There are, there is still only one person object in this program because it's the one I created on line four. When I see new, something got created. If I don't see new, nothing got created. So in this case, what was copied is the reference. So now me and you both have a reference. Because me and you both have a reference of the same object, they can both make changes to that object and those changes will be visible to both references. So this would print 40.